Good to see you, my friends. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of October 6th. Now, on this show, what I like to do is share with you hot penny stocks that have potential to make us money. I'm looking for stocks every day that are under five bucks on any market that have that potential. And normally, I do all of my research by going to the charts first. I'm looking for hot charts, not hot news. I believe the technicals take precedent over the textuals. So I'm looking at charts, trying to find a breakout setup or a lot of volume coming in or big bounces setting new highs, something that makes that chart look hot. When I find a chart that has heat, then I go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings looking for a catalyst. This is how I normally do my research. Well, today we're doing it a little differently. We're going to focus in on the AI sector, regardless of their charts, because I think the charts are going to take care of themselves, folks. The AI sector has a lot of potential and it's growing super, super fast, folks. There are other sectors out there that have potential right now. Your EV market, these electric vehicles, they are changing the world. We are dealing with mining, processing of those minerals, manufacturing batteries, selling batteries. We got lots of things going on in the EV market, but that's taking years. We also have the metaverse, not real hot right now, but it was real hot before COVID and it's starting to pick up momentum right now. But that too is way down the road before it's fully implemented. Another hot sector is cannabis. Now this one could explode at any moment. The DEA is considering a decision to reschedule cannabis, bring it down from schedule one down to schedule three. And that would make the cannabis market explode, especially the US market. But they are nothing relative and compared to the AI market. The AI market right now, folks, is exploding at such a rate you cannot believe it. It was initially back in 2017, we had our first piece of news really about AI. Google came out with their neural network. Then it was three years later, we heard the first about GPT. Then this year, boom, 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 boom. We have all sorts of catalysts coming out. In three months, we had a bunch of them come out. Initially, the AI chat GPT was touching on to something like 174 billion points of interest, and now it's up to 7 trillion points of interest. This is growing so fast, folks, that we have no idea how fast it's going to grow. They are predicting right now that this can speed up our economy, not by five times, not by 10 times, but by 250 times. Folks, I don't know if people are going to be able to keep up with this. Now, you see the chart up there right now. This shows you how fast companies have been growing that have been exploding. We've got Netflix, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and ChatGPT here. Now, this is looking how long it took them to get their first 100 million users. You had Netflix get it in about 10 years their first 100 million users. Then you had Facebook hit that at about the seven year mark. Twitter, they hit it at five. Instagram blew everybody away, getting their 100 million users by three years. But look at chat GPT. Folks, that is a straight line going up. They did this in three months. They got their 100 million users just like that. And now, just a few months later, they are at 1.8 billion users. This is exploding fast. And I'm not just talking about user base. I'm talking about what they're going to be able to do, folks. AI is going to change everything. This is going to be disruptive. And that's what's going to make this so huge, folks. And it's not all good. Sorry to say it's not all good. AI is probably going to eliminate millions and millions and millions of jobs. And they're not going to be the low paying jobs either. They're going to be college educated people, white collar workers, your engineers, your designers, your executives, these, these decision positions in the company. AI 
can make decisions. So all those jobs are going to be lost, folks. It is going to be horrendous, but the market's going to make a lot of money. It is going to start exploding here fast. And there's a lot of AI companies out there right now. And we've got to be careful because a lot of AI companies are using AI, but it's not their product. They just tap into it and create a few subline products. We're looking at companies that have their own AI. I'm looking for companies that have big customer bases that aren't, you know, AI can probably do anything, probably make a pair of shoes to fit a canary perfectly. But how much money is that going to make? You want AI to be doing something everybody needs, something ubiquitous, worldwide, global. Those are the sort of companies I'm trying to focus in on right now. So they say that AI is going to disrupt the market by $15.7 trillion, folks. And when you compare that to the other disruptive markets that have come before, like uh, the mainframe, the personal computer, the mobile network, this is blowing them all away. And nobody knows how far it's going to go. That's what's exciting and scary about this, folks. We've never been here before. Rob Hansen says that the world's economy, which now doubles every 15 years or so, would soon double in somewhere from a week to a month. Folks, honestly, I don't know if we're going to be able to keep up with this. So we're going to take a look at some AI stocks right now because we are approaching what they call singularity, folks. The singularity moment has been predicted to happen by 2059, but it's also been predicted to happen in three months. What is singularity? Singularity is when AI surpasses the intelligence of mankind. They are smarter than us. We can't even second guess them anymore. We have to rely on what they tell us. We have to lean on them and trust the AI. This is when it goes from being artificial intelligence to artificial super intelligence. AI becomes ASI. And we are on that cusp right now and nobody really knows how close the edge is, but we know we're getting close. The first AI company we're going to take a look at is Fisco Note Holdings, ticker N-O-T-E, Note. Now, I found it interesting as I was doing my research looking for AI companies. I already had this one. I was looking for others. Why well, I discovered that the search engine Bing, B-I-N-G, they use AI with their search engine results. So I asked the AI specifically to make a recommendation for an AI penny stock. And this is the one it recommended. So I think this is probably a good one to look at. Note finished today at $2.15 with about a half percent gains. She is on the major exchange, the New York Stock Exchange. This means you're going to be able to trade it for free. There's no transaction fees with major exchange stocks. And you're going to be able to trade this pre-market, after-market as well. There's a lot of benefits trading major exchange penny stocks over the OTC. So what does Fisco Note Holdings do? Well, they tell us over here that Fisco Note is a leader in policy and global intelligence. By uniquely combining data, technology, and insights, Fisco Note empowers customers to manage political and business risk. They've been in business for 10 years. They just came on the market last year through a SPAC merger. The company has pioneered technology that delivers critical insights and the tools to turn them into action. Home to CQ, Frontier View, Oxford Analytica, Voter Voice, and many other industry-leading brands, Fisco Notes serves approximately 5,000 customers worldwide with global offices in North America, Europe, Asia, and Australia. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh, she dropped about 40% of her volume going from 762,000, dropping down to almost 400,000 shares today. Share structure for note. Well, they don't give us a lot of information here. They tell us the outstanding share count is about 120 million. No float given. We know the float won't be over the outstanding share count, and it could be considerably less. And the market cap for the company... 258 million. Financials for note. All right, at the end of 2022, she did $113 million 
jumping over $30 million from 2021 with lots of profit. She's up to $81 million in 2022. Quarterly, not bad at all. She just had her strongest quarterly report over the last year, doing $32.8 million, keeping $23 million of it. Checking out that balance sheet for the company. In the bank, cash, they've got $38 million. $15 million is still owed to them. Total assets, they've got $422 million and total liabilities down at 329. So their assets are stronger than liabilities and their revenues are strong. Checking the company's disclosures. We've got two Form 4s here which were filed this month. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company's stock. Now we're primarily interested when they buy them and sell them. Both of these Form 4s are for sales, but not for profit. They have sold stock to pay tax obligations, so no concern there. Checking out the news for the company. We have gone all the way back here to July 20th. Fisco Note announces partnership with Korea's Ministry of Foreign Affairs to provide AI-powered policy and data intelligence, legislative and regulatory monitoring, and global issues management. They tell us here that this collaboration is the first ever between the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and a commercial provider. The company entered into a landmark agreement with the Republic of Korea's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. This is the first of its kind between Korea's Ministry of Foreign Affairs and a commercial provider. Korea's Ministry of Foreign Affairs will use Fisco Note's proprietary data sets and enhanced AI capabilities to assist the ministry in responding to rapidly changing international dynamics and associated domestic policy-making needs. In December 2022, Fisco Note entered into a similar agreement with Korea's National Assembly, also the first of its kind between the institution and a commercial provider. They had another piece of news come out in August. Fisco Note launches Fisco Note GPT as a generative AI system built specifically for policy and regulatory industry. Then we've got a nice piece of news here. Fisco Note announces further expansion of its global public sector leadership and coverage by unveiling wide range of new customer agreements. This is wild, folks. This piece of news lists a whole bunch of their new customers right here. All of these people are new customers. Ministry of Unification Korea, Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry in Japan, Cabinet Office in the United Kingdom, several ministries of the government of Japan, several ministries of the government of Canada, the Embassy of Japan in the U.S., the Embassy of Canada, the Embassy of Pakistan, all of these government affiliated customers are with this company. Now they tell us over here that they have a lot of customers. They tell us that they are now working with over 80 countries. And we read in their description they're working with over 5,000 customers in these 80 countries. And all of them look to be government agencies. Another big piece of news came out August 15th. Fisco Note celebrates 10 year anniversary and first year as a public company with opening bell ringing ceremony at the New York Stock Exchange. Fisco Note marks a decade of AI innovation and global leadership in legal, regulatory, and policy intelligence. The company celebrated the dual 10 year anniversary and their first year anniversary being on the public market. The past year has brought additional significant milestones and achievements to the company as it continues its customer expansion, growth, and AI-driven innovation journey with these three strategic acquisitions. New AI partnerships with OpenAI, Google, and Microsoft. An array of recently launched groundbreaking AI products, including Fisco Note's Risk Connector and Fisco Note GPT, and its first sustainability overview. The company's addition to the Russell 300 Index and a number of industry and leadership awards and newly granted patents. We are also celebrating a decade of innovative and leadership in using AI and advanced data analytics to help the world's organizations, corporations, and governments and decision makers better understand, manage, and navigate our increasingly complex and volatile political and economic environment 
as well as the multitude of policies, legislation, and regulations being developed every day. In our past year, as a public company, we have transformed the way we do business and serve our customers with innovative and award-winning products, placing a focus on driving compounding profitable growth that serves as the foundation for the next exciting chapter of our history. Today, we also salute our thousands of global customers and shareholders who have placed their confidence and trust us. And that last piece of news that came out was September 12th, Fiscal Note launches dynamic dashboard in expansion of its AI-powered risk connector. Basically, this is an added tool for the head honchos so that they can get in there and easily get that data and information at their fingertips. So the company's making money. They got strong assets. They're doing business with the right people. Governments. Governments are going to pay these people lots and lots and lots of money forever. <laughs> this is very exciting to me, folks. I can't see how big it's going to get, but you can see the potential. Let's go take a look at this chart now. I'm ready to do some charting. How about you? We're going to chart all these stocks on my free trading platform, Think or Swim, also known as TOS. You get this when you sign up at TD Ameritrade, and that's free too. So we are looking at Fiscal Note Holdings, ticker N-O-T-E, Note. This is a one-day, one-year chart. Our 52-week high hit in December of last year, $6.87, and that came down to a 52-week low at the end of March of $1.31. Now you can see she has been in a downtrend all of this time, but she had a wild run right here. Now look down here at our PPO, Percentage Price Oscillator. We need this blue line on top of the pink. That's when you get your strength. Well, she's been under that pink line for a very long time. Tried to break out right here, but couldn't do it. But she did do it right there. Well, go straight up, folks. This is where you see our breakout start. She was at $1.50 and ran all the way up here to $4.60. Over $3 run once she got over that pink. She came all the way up here and lost the fight because she broke the 200 here and it was just too steep. So she fell all the way back down here. But look at our PPO. It looks like it's ready to cross again, right? Let's take a look at our six month, four hour view. Six months ago, our high was $5.67. That was at the end of January. There's that run over the 200, sweet run. She came back down to the 200 and for many a day, she was bouncing on top of this 200. Had a surge here, looked like she was going to break out, but she didn't. Something happened. She stumbled and fell all the way back down here to a low of around $1.83. And she's been bouncing off of this 200-day haul. Now, this purple-blue line, the 200 haul, that's a lot like your 200-day SMA. It takes 200 days of prices, averages them all together, but then gives more credence to current prices. So you end up with the line much closer to the price. You can kind of think of this as a more current 200-day SMA. And she is respecting it. She is bouncing off of that 200 haul, wrestling with the 50-day SMA. That's her real battle right now. The 200 haul is just her support holding her up. She has been fighting to get on top of this 50, and it looks like she's winning the battle right now. She's closing that gap, getting on top of the 50, with our 200-day coming down. She's coming up. It's coming down. We are setting up for an atypical breakout chart here. Volume has been decreasing over this period of time, but our oscillators are getting stronger. Our PPO is on top of the pink. Our MACD is over the signal line. And if you look real close, the very end of those blue lines are just starting to turn up right now. And our RSI is at the coolest I like to see it, 55. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Still in that downtrend here, but look what's happened. You see that 200 falling downhill. Right here, it's starting to get flat. When did she break out? Well, she shows signs that she wanted to, right? She kept banging her head on it over and over. But once that 200 got flat, boom, she broke out. She came down, tested it. You got to expect the test. And now the 200 is actually starting to turn up. So it's pushed itself up on top of that. And she is starting to climb and push away from the 200. She is underneath her 20-day SMA. But I feel she's going to get on top of that. The oscillators have some strength. Our PPO is climbing. 
MACD did have a nice drop, if you can call it drop nice. <laughs> she fell underneath her line and it looks like she's trying to recover right now. And our RSI is cool. That's down at 52 right now. Five day, five minute. So we've got a low bubble here of $1.85 bouncing to a high bubble of $2.29, falling back down to the 200, which is now on an uptrend. She's come up to that, beating her head on it many a times, fell down to get some running room, ran at that 200 as hard as she could, busted through it. She got up on top and she is arguing with it hard right now. And here comes our 20 day SMA to give it a bump in the butt to help push it up. 200 haul, 50 day SMA, they're all curving up right now. Volume is getting strong at the end of the day. Oscillators don't have a whole lot to say except, uh, <laughs> they're all kind of falling right now. But the fact of the matter is, folks, we're not looking at note to run tomorrow or the next day. We're looking at AI stocks that are going to explode because we're looking at the right ones. We're looking at AI companies that are dealing with big products, dealing with big prices. They're dealing with governments, corporations, and I don't think any of these people are going to let this service go. I like Note. I think she's dealing in the right area with the right customers, and I think she's going to have a lot of growth. Come on, folks. Put Note on your watch list, ticker N-O-T-E. Make note of it. Got another hot AI penny stock for you at least in my opinion. This is Big Bear AI, ticker BBAI. Now you're not gonna get too excited about the chart. She has been in a steady downtrend for a while, but right now the technicals are turning and you can see things are starting to turn up on the charts. She's setting up for a breakout, but she ain't there yet. But remember, all the stocks we're looking at, none of them am I presuming are gonna run this week. I'm sharing stocks with you that I think are going to explode when the AI sector explodes. And when's that going to be? <laughs> That's just it. Nobody knows. Will it be when singularity hits? I don't know, folks. What we need to do is be prepared by finding companies that are going to explode. Companies that have customers with deep pockets. Customers that vitally need their information. BBAI is working with the military. She's working with defense contractors, big businesses. All of her customers have deep pockets. Her charts may look wimpy, but her customers look very strong. So BBAI, she finished the day at $1.47 with just under 3% gains. And she too is on the major exchange. She's on the New York Stock Exchange. So what does BBAI do specifically? Well, they tell us over here that Big Bear is a leading provider of AI-powered military and business intelligence solutions. The company serves three core markets, including global supply chain and logistics, autonomous systems, and cybersecurity. The U.S. government and enterprises rely on Big Bear's predictive analytics capabilities to better understand the implications of changes to their complex environments systems, processes, and supply chains. This intelligence then supports better planning, forecasting, and decision-making. And the company's headquartered right here in the good old USA in Columbia, Maryland. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh, took a drop of more than 60%, it looks like, dropping from 2.6 million down to 1.1 million. Checking out the share structure for BBAI. All they give us is the outstanding share count at about 156 million. Our float could be anywhere up to that or anywhere below that. And our market cap, that is currently at about 229 million. Checking out the financials for Big Bear. Well, they don't give us anything over here, but I did go jump into their financials. This is what I found. Summary results for the second quarter of the year. At the end of June 30th, they did $38.4 million. Had to pay $30 million for that, and they got to keep about $9 million. And compared to last year, they were only up a smidge on the quarterly. On the half-year basis, they're doing better. 2023, they've done about $80.5 million. Compared to last year, they did $74 million. So they're up over $6 million on the six-month basis. 
So they're not doing bad in that regard. Taking a look at our disclosures. Ooh, we've got some more Form 4s here. Now, all of these Form 4s are like the last ones. They're all little sales for tax obligations. Nobody's making any money. They're being forced to make these sales right now. And you've got the most recent financial quarterly report there. So if you really want to get to know the company, dive into the quarterly report. Forget about Google. The quarterly reports, the annual reports, they have all the information about the company, all their deals, their finances, who's invested in the company. Not me and you. I mean the big, the big investors. All right, let's take a look at that news now. There really isn't a lot of news over here. Most of what you see are articles for other companies from Seeking Alpha. We've got one piece of news for our company that came out October 4th, and I found one from May. So let's take a look at that one from May 1st. L3 Harris and Big Bear team to deliver artificial intelligence for autonomous surface vessels. We're talking about boats and ships. L3 Harris Technologies, ticker LHX, entered into a teaming agreement with Big Bear to deliver advanced autonomous surface vessel capabilities and artificial intelligence for current and future maritime defense programs. We are thrilled to partner with L3 Harris and combine our cutting edge AI technology with a key leader in unmanned and autonomous systems. Our advanced AI capabilities enable autonomous vessels to operate with unparalleled efficiency and safety supporting higher risk missions, expanding operational reach, and most importantly, saving lives. As the battle space evolves, autonomous systems will play an increasingly significant role. We look forward to the limitless possibilities that lie ahead. Now, as I said, L3 Harris Technologies is on the New York Stock Exchange, ticker LHX. Currently, they're Price is $163 a share. And would you look at their revenues, folks? Don't forget, we got to add three zeros behind that. At the end of 2022, LHX did over $17 billion worth of business. The other piece of news came out October 4th. Big Bear Simulation for AutoCAD, showcased by Autodesk CEO. Now, you're going to see the acronym CAD often. CAD. This stands for Computer Assisted Design. They've been around for a very long time. Autodesk solutions are now directly integrated with Big Bear's Pro Model Discrete Event Simulator, enabling users to accurately simulate entire multifaceted systems inside of AutoCAD, the world's market leading architectural engineering and construction design platform. Autodesk's factory design utilities provide planners with actionable insights to plan and execute on installation and confirmation of optimally cost-effective and agile project solutions. As a result, AutoCAD professionals are empowered with confidence that their design will produce the correct number of products in the desired amount of time before ever spending a single dollar on implementation or trial and error. You gotta love that. Well, Autodesk is also on the major exchange, they're on the NASDAQ. Autodesk is currently selling at $210 a share, and they did over $5 billion worth of business in their last annual report. So they're not doing business with little companies. They're doing business with big companies, and a lot of them. There is a huge list of companies they're working with in cybersecurity, in defense. They have lots of companies, lots of business, and I think it's just going to keep getting bigger. Let's go take a look at that wimpy chart. Let's take a look at this bad boy, Big Bear AI, ticker BBAI. We're looking at a six-month, four-hour view. That high bubble there is a 52-week high that hit in February of $6.77, and our 52-week low hit just before that, last day of December, at $0.58. Cents. On our four-hour, six-month chart, our low is $1.27. And as you can see, she has been on a downtrend all of this time. It was fast and furious. Now it's just gotten slow and gradual. The only good thing we can say here is she's not plummeting. She's hanging around the 200. Every time she falls away, she just jumps right back up there. She doesn't want to get too far away from it. And right now she is pushing up again. 
Nothing to brag about on the volume. It's been falling for the last couple of weeks. But our oscillators are growing in strength. Our PPO has got a crossover right now. Our MACD is crossing the signal line right now. And our green bars are accumulating, getting bigger. And our RSI is climbing, though it's only up to 53 right now. Checking out that 20-day, one-hour view. Downhill trend from $1.80 down to that $1.28. Fast bounce right up to that 200-day SMA, fell only to the 50, bounced back up to the 200-day SMA, came back down, went sideways. You can see she doesn't want to get away from this 200, and when she gets an opportunity to get on top, she may start to run. She is pushing right now. She is arguing to stay up there, and she's losing the fight at this very, very minute. Oscillators say just that. Things are starting to push down right now on the hourly chart. Checking out that five day, five minute. So we've got a high five days ago of $1.59. There's our low of $1.32 three days ago. She jumped up onto the 200 after being under it hard and deep, and she's been sitting up there. You can see she's bouncing off of it, testing it, but she's not going under. Look at this test. Didn't even come all the way down, did it? Price is starting to get a little lighter, maybe, trying to climb. Oscillators, uh, let's see if we get a little closer here. They're all pushing down right now. I can see this coming down to the 200. Chances are it might come underneath, but looks like it will probably bounce. But again, folks, I hate to keep saying this. We're not looking at these for runners tomorrow or this week. They might, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the imminent explosion for the AI market. I think it is going to be big. We have no idea when, but we need to target stocks that are going to make us money. Not just any old AI company, the right AI companies. And I think BBAI is one of them. Got an interesting AI company for you here. This is Avant Technologies, ticker AVAI. Now, their chart, it's a lot like all the other charts. She's in a slow downtrend with just a little bit of a bump right now. Not anything to get excited about. This company just changed their name back in May. They used to be Trend Innovations, changed their ticker as well. And they just became an AI company in April. They've changed a lot of management, they've been making some new deals, and their financials have taken a hit. But this is something AI must have. If AI is going to grow, if AI is going to be a success, they're going to need a company like this. Think about this. AI uses a lot of data. AI is going to generate a lot of data. Where does all that data go? in the cloud, but the cloud has to be big enough itself. And with all these AIs coming out, we're gonna to have to have massive clouds. And cloud business is gonna to have to be faster than AI. They're gonna to have to grow quicker. So these companies are gonna grow at the same rate as AI. It's another huge opportunity. So Avant Technologies, ticker AVAI, finished the day at a dollar on Friday with just over 1% gain. She is on the OTC market, the middle tier, the better tier. This is OTC QB. You have to audit your financials to be here. You got to be over a penny to be here. This is the better tier. It's better than the pinks. You don't get any validated information over there. Financials are not audited. Speaking of validated information, we've got a verified profile and a transfer agent verified over here. Those two green ticks are validated information. So they've got financials that have been validated and they've got validated information. This company's looking good. So what is Avant Technologies all about? Well, they tell us here that Avant Technologies specializes in acquiring, creating, and developing innovative and advanced technologies that utilize artificial intelligence, including software and other applications developed using the company's signature machine and deep learning AI technology, Avant AI. Avant Technologies' mission is to introduce AI to a host of industries and shape how we engage with and implement AI technologies globally. Our strategy is threefold. First, we create and introduce our own first in class AI related technologies in house. Second, we offer Avant AI as a business to business solution for customers to improve their own products with an AI enhancement. 
And finally, we license our sophisticated AI engine to third-party developers as a software development kit to create and launch their own brand of AI-centric products. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Arg. <laughs> wow, she's really under the radar, folks. She has been doing 1.4 thousand shares a day for the last 30 days. Friday, she didn't even hit 1,000 shares, only 900 shares, but I still believe in this company. Share structure for AVAI. Well, we got lots of information here. Outstanding share count, about 74 million. Insiders, they own the lion's share, about 45 million, and that leaves us with a float of about 29 million. That's not a bad float. I'll take that one. Financials. For AVAI, at the end of 2022, she had done $921,000 worth of business. We know it's thousands because we've got to add those three zeros up there to any of the numbers on any of these charts. And then in 2023, her fiscal year ends in March, she dropped down to $276,000 and they were losing money now. I'm not surprised. They're in a transition. They're closing down one business, starting up another one. Money's ending, hasn't started. So yeah, you get this law for revenues right there. But as I said, I do believe in this company. Checking out the disclosures for AVAI. We've got one 8K that just came out two days ago. This has to do with a promissory note. They're trying to get money for shares from a big investor. So let's take a look at that news now. So we have gone all the way back here to April when they were still called Trend Innovations. And there's really only one piece of news I want to read here, but we'll go through these headlines. Trend Innovations Holdings, enhancing its artificial intelligence platform to offer improved, more robust, user-friendly experience. Also in April, the company stated that their machine and deep learning AI engine offers superior cybersecurity solutions in burgeoning sector. Then in May, investment pitch media video features Trend Innovations Holding and its recent significant acquisitions in the AI sector. In July, Trend Innovations announces their name and ticker change. In August, the company unveils plans for development of a large-scale supercomputer to empower AI software companies, which leads us right into the piece of news we're going to read. This came out September 26th. Avant Technologies reshaping future of supercomputing and AI with disruptive private cloud infrastructure. Avant Technologies today announced it's advancing the next generation of cloud supercomputing to meet the burgeoning AI industry demands for more power and value. Avant's cloud supercomputing network has the potential to be the world's most powerful and cost-effective private cloud infrastructure. The company's plan is to address the pervasive cost and performance limitations that continue to hinder AI, machine learning, and big data analytics development and commercialization. Rapid growth across the entirety of the AI and big data industries is outpacing the necessary infrastructure for an industry that demands exponential power and capacity while remaining cost effective. We recognized this real unmet need and began planning to develop a true edge-native distributed supercomputer that will revolutionize the landscape for AI software development companies and other companies that require immense scalable computing power. Avant plans to deliver superior performance and value to a host of industries with its private cloud infrastructure by reducing costs and offering more deliverables, such as increased computing density. There you have it, folks. They know what we're talking about. You've got to have cloud if you're going to have AI. Your hard drive can't hold all the movies you want, so you've got to get another hard drive, then another hard drive, then another hard drive. At some point, it's too much. That's why they invented the cloud, to hold these vast amounts of data. And that's what AI is perfect for, creating vast amounts of data. So I like this company, and we're seeing it at the start. Let's take a look at the chart. Tough to talk about charts that aren't sizzling. This is AVAI Avant Technologies. We are looking at a six-month, four-hour view. 
we have an exaggerated low here, 51 cents at the very bottom of this wick. This dropped from uh, $1.38 down to 51 and then jumped right back up here to $1.17. That was over 100% recovery right there, just coming back to here. Then she hit a high of $1.99 on April 4th. This is the day that she acquired Avant AI. That too was short-lived, came right back down, falling to a low here of 84 cents. That was 50% drop. Came back up and she's kind of here in the middle, had an excitable bounce here, again short-lived, came under the 200, desperately scrapping at it, trying to hang on and couldn't do it, and phew, she's falling all the way down here. There isn't a lot of volume to talk about. There's not a lot of activity. We see the price is trying to cross up over that 20-day SMA. That's a good sign. We see our oscillators are growing. Our PPO is pushing up, trying to cross that pink line. MACD is working its way towards the signal line. Lots of green bars. We want to see that. And our RSI is a bit cool. It is down there at 51. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view, not a lot of trading here. You notice we're getting fewer bars. So we got a high here of $1.06. Fell down to $0.71. Cents, came up to the 50 Fell back down. She's wrestling. She's gotten up on top. Is she actually there? Let's see. We are at the price. Yes, we are on top. We are right up here. So we are now on top of the 50-day SMA. Don't have a 200-day SMA in the picture. So it's not going to affect us. This is the best of possibilities. Think of that as our 200-day SMA right now. She's on top of it on the one-hour chart. Oscillators, we just had a crossover. Our PPO was pushing up, gaining strength. Our ADX, my trend continuation, whenever I see this line going down and my PPO blue line going up and they're separating, 100% guaranteed your price is climbing. So that's looking good. MACD just crossed the signal line, lots of green bars, and our RSI is still a bit chilly down there at 53 Taking a look at our five day, five minute. Not a lot of bars to look at. 75 cents is our low, $1 is our high. $1 was the closing price today. Although it doesn't show that over here, does it? Unless it's right there. Yeah, you can see she's hitting her head on that dollar. Bing, 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 over and over again. And she's bouncing on top of the 20. She looks like she's climbing just very subtly, very slowly. But <laughs> I'm gonna say it again. We're not looking at these to run tomorrow or this week. We're trying to find stocks that when the AI sector explodes, we've got sticks of dynamite in our hand and not little firecrackers. I like AVAI. She's not making any money right now. She's just gotten into AI. That's a bit scary, but they've got plans. They are going to build this supercomputer cloud computing for AI. They know what's necessary and they know how much money is on the table. They said it, I said it. The infrastructure has to keep up, actually be faster than AI. So if you don't like AI, you want something different, go to cloud computing. That is going to be just as big as AI. AVAI is another smart AI company. I've given you three folks. I am accumulating a list here. I will be breaking that out and sharing it with you soon. There's a lot of AI companies out there. I like these three, but do some more due diligence. Don't count on me for everything. There's a lot more information, but it's good information. I didn't hide anything bad from you. I'm not pumping these stocks. Nobody has paid me to talk to you about these stocks. I did this of my own free will, and I am sharing this information with you free of charge. So please do your own due diligence because the money is yours. You're investing it. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.